need some key figures to, you know, help you, all right, with music if possible. You need somebody strong, one or two people, really. And you'll notice that Jesus, when he walked by the Sea of Galilee, he saw Simon and Andrew, his brother, and Jesus said unto them, Come ye after me, and I will make you to become teachers of men. And he went a little further, and he saw James, the son of Zebedee, and John, his brother, and straight away he called them, and they left their father and went after him. Hallelujah. And when James, Cephas, and John, who seemed to be pillars, pillars, you see, these people became the pillars in the church, the people he was recruiting, they became pillars. Do you have a copy of this little book? This will not be one of the free ones, so you have to get it. I mean, like I said, there's no free one. It's just a little discount. on. But there's 20 runs, so if we reduce it, how much will it become? All right. Now it says, Pray ye therefore the Lord of the harvest that he will send forth laborers into his harvest. Amen. Amen. The next one. Lay a foundation of prayer. I sometimes encourage people. I'm talking about how to start a church. All right. And I encourage you to get the book because the notes are there. All right. Now, pray for some hours where if you want to start a church, pray for 20 hours, 30 hours, 50 hours, 100 hours. Has anybody got a piece of paper? Kada, you can lend to me a, a bare sheet of paper. Lend me a bare sheet of paper and a pen. Okay, thank you. And now I need to borrow a pen. Let me show you how to pray for. How many want to know how to pray for 20 hours? Huh? Would you like to want to know how to pray for 20 hours? Yeah, it's very easy. You see my piece of paper? Okay. You just mark one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Eight, nine, ten. Now, what's the church you are going to start? What area do you want the church? Mere Wind. So, Mere Wind Church. Merzi. You see, can you see my paper? You see? Okay, the camera. Show him on the camera. Okay, can you see? All right, you see the line. So now, you go into your room and you say, Lord, I want to commit the mere one church that I'm going to begin into your hands in the name of Jesus. Then you look at your watch, 10 minutes to five, okay? So you start praying, 10 minutes to five, and you pray. Now, prayer, Paul prayed Paul, that great ten ministry, prayed a lot in tongues. You get it? So you need to decide a lot in the spirit because you don't know what is going to meet you in mere went. So as you pray for one hour, two hour, one hour, then you circle it. One hour. Show them. You see the circle there? Huh? And there are, this is 30 hours. The first is 10, 10 strokes, 10, 10. Many times when I go to wait on the Lord, I, I, I said, I'm going to pray for 40 hours. Maybe I'm there for some few days. I'm not going to pray for 30 hours. I'm going to pray for 40 hours. I do this. Every hour I pray, I say, just to keep God. Sometimes if you lie in a room for a long time alone, you just sleep, you do nothing. And I set my alarm clock to ring every 15 minutes. Every 15 minutes, my alarm clock, because in case I sleep. How many have been praying? You pray and you wake up. Not that you pray and sleep, but you pray and then you wake up. 
You don't even know when you sleep. <laughs> Suddenly, you realize that you are waking up. Has it happened to you before? Raise your hand if it's happened to you before. Uh -huh. So, there you can see one. So, when you've prayed for six hours, each you pray for an hour, you just circle it, and you see that you are going. You are going. You are going. You just keep circling, circling like that. Show them. Can you see? Huh? One hour, each is an hour. Each of that is an hour. So you have your paper and you just mere went. So this is a mere went project. I'm just committing 30 hours of intercession into mere went project. That's what I'm preaching about. Lay a foundation of prayer. Do you see? And then you pray. So now, according to this sheet, I've prayed for 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. I've circled 11 of the strokes. I've prayed for 11 hours, and I, I'm praying for 30 hours. You see, that helps to be in one place and to pray for a long time. And you can do this over some days or some weeks, but it helps you to monitor what you are actually doing. Otherwise, you just know you've prayed generally, and it's like you're tired of praying. And because you pray in tongues, you don't know what you are praying. Because the Bible says, no man understandeth him. How be it in the spirit he speaketh mysteries to God. Are you listening to me? Are you listening to me? So this is a very important secret. And this is, this is what I do because if I go, let's say I'm going for a retreat somewhere. I'm, I'm going to be there for three days. I'm going to pray for three days, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. I mean, I can just sleep the whole time. Do you understand? Or you'll be praying and watching CNN or praying and watching SABC. But you can go into your room from morning to evening and you can accomplish five hours, five hours of the prayer. Five hours. You get it? And each time, you circle it, you circle it, you circle it, you circle it, and you realize you are getting somewhere in the Lord. Amen. You are getting somewhere. Two hours. So like this time, maybe I prayed for four hours, I circled the lower ones there. And I'm praying. So you lay a foundation of prayer. Amen. And you can also decide to fast. So I'm showing you how to start a church. Are you listening to me? Because it is a spiritual thing. It's not something physical. It's not a club. A church is a spiritual entity. It is a spiritual force. It's something that is established spiritually. It's not established by might or by power. It's established by spiritual principles and spiritual forces that are applied and set into motion. If you want your church to move to the next level, okay, what do you do? I want to pray for 20 hours to take my existing church, you get it, to the next level. You see, Bible says that when Zion traveled, she brought forth. You see, you don't bring forth something new unless you travel. When a woman goes to the labor ward, she doesn't come forth with a new baby until she suffers in the prayer. She has to scream and suffer. Uh, 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 uh. And that's what the Bible says. That's what, what about travail. Paul said that my little children of whom I travail again in prayer. I'm travailing again in prayer for you. I'm bringing you forth again. Do you understand? So as we are going to start it, it's not by might. So you go and stand in mere when the people will come to you. Nobody will come to you. People listen to you preaching when your preaching is anointed and when the power of God is working in your life and in your ministry. Ministries that you see, if you see me standing here preaching, don't take it for granted. Don't think that I just go and eat bread every day and I do whatever. I'm just lying around and playing tennis and coming to, to, to preach. No, I pray. I pray for hours. If I get a chance, I pray for spending a long time praying when I get the opportunity. I can spend days on my own just praying. Do you understand? And I, I wait on the Lord. And I pray. Before I started my church, I used to go to the beach. We have a beach near our, 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 our school, uh, where I was in school. And I used to walk at 10 o'clock every night to the beach and pray from 10 till midnight. Every day there were five of us. You get it? And we used to stand on the beach praying. Kabbalah, you can't even hear your voice because of the sea. And pray. Kabbalah, Two hours every night. Every night. Praying. There are some botanical gardens in, in, in Accra. 
I used to go to those gardens. I take off my shirt, walk around the gardens, praying. I used to. I, uh, there were places we we sit under trees. You know, some benches there, and we pray for hours from 10 to 5, 10 to 5, 10 to 5, 10 to 5. You get there at 10 o'clock, you pray till 5, and then you go on your way home. You there's a tap there. You open a tap and drink some water and continue walking home. That's 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 how you. That's how we gave birth to the ministries. They were born through prayer. Every great movement is born through prayer. This ministry will not be born, and your ministry will not be born without these spiritual things. You can't use money to buy members. You can't use a, 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 a psychology. It's a spiritual work. So if you want your church to move to the next level, let's say you are pastoring a church in San, uh, where? Gateway. Huh? Is Gateway a place or? Gateway Church International, okay? So gateways, so you want to, your, your church has got 33 members and you want to gateway to the next level. So you have gateway. And say, so I want to pray for 20 hours. You make your markings like this. And then you take time off. If it's Saturday, I'm a lay person. Or in the evenings, you spend two hours praying. Or you wake up in the night, 3 a.m. to 5 a.m. You get it. And each time you pray, you just mark it. And all you have to do is, Lord, I commit this into your hand. Take me to the next level in the ministry in the name of Jesus. Set your alarm clock every 10 minutes, it should ring. Otherwise, you'll be praying, then you wake up at 5 a.m. and you haven't prayed. <laughs> because, look, one of the most powerful sedatives is prayer. Anybody who says he cannot sleep, ask him to pray. I have three special sedatives I give if you can't sleep. First one is prayer. As soon as you start praying, you, be, you, you enter the realm of peace because you are trusting God. Suddenly all the troubles and the entropy just goes down and all the troubles of the world just go away and then you feel like, that's why we sleep when we pray because we are getting nearer to God. We are getting nearer to happiness, to love, to peace. If that one cannot cure your sleeplessness, you move to reading of the Bible, New Testament. You get it? New Testament reading. Ephesians, Colossians, John, Matthew, and so on. That one is very likely to make you sleep. If the New Testament is not able to work, then you move to the most powerful sedative, which is Leviticus, Numbers, Exodus, and so on and so forth. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Are you listening to me? Are you hearing me? Hello? Give me some volume, all right? So, ladies and gentlemen, uh, prayer makes you sleep. So, you got to do something to keep yourself awake. Amen. Keep yourself praying. Keep yourself awake. And let now learn travailing prayer. We need to become prayer warriors. You need to know how to pray on your own, alone, personally, for hours. Are you listening to me? Yes. Are you listening to me? Do you really want to be 10 ministers? Do you really want to be 10 pastors? Then you have to listen carefully to what I'm saying because it's not a matter of using psychology, ideas, advice, and what other's natural weapon. We are using the anointing and the presence of God upon our lives. Jesus went to the wilderness for 40 days and night. He woke up early in the morning to pray. Apostle Paul said, I thank God I pray in tongues more than all of you guys. That should tell you what the level of prayer must be for any of us who wants to do what God has called us to do. Are you listening to me? So this is a key. Lay a foundation of prayer. So decide, I'm going to lay a foundation of 50 hours of prayer. Recently, I wanted to start a new denomination apart from Lighthouse Chapel International. And so I went somewhere and I decided to pray about it. Amen. And I decided to, can the baby be taken out, please? I decided to pray for a certain number of hours. And I just marked my paper and prayed all through those committing that new idea that I, the Lord had given me into his hands. Hallelujah. All right. So, ladies and gentlemen, prayer foundation of prayer is so important. Now, we come to the next important question. 
which is how and what scriptures should we use when we are praying to start a church? Amen. It's all right here. Number one, you pray, thy will be done. Amen. Amen. Thy will be done. Because we are praying and committing ourselves into the hands of the Lord. Is that not so? Not my will, thy will be done. Okay. The next prayer we pray is, thy kingdom come. Okay. Thy kingdom come. Let your kingdom come. I'm giving you prayer topics. Okay, prayer topics. Lord, I pray for your kingdom to come in Merwent, in Santon, in, in uh, where? Where is this Indian place where I went to preach the other time? What, what do you call that place? Chatsworth. Chatsworth. Huh? We're praying that the kingdom... Do, do we have a church in Chatsworth? Have you started a church there? There are a lot of churches there. And that's why you are needed there. You are needed there. Amen. Are there any Indians here? Is it not an Indian area? Yeah. Basically Indian. So we need you. If you are here and you are Indian, find your way to Chatsworth in Jesus' name. Amen. Find your way to Chatsworth and go and do the work of the Lord. Hallelujah. Okay, so pray, thy kingdom come to Chatsworth. Thy kingdom come. In Jesus' name, then you start to speak in tongues. Look at the time. Two o'clock. You end in at three. Okay? When you get to three, you circle. You put in one hour and then you keep on going. Any problem? The battery? Reception? All right. Okay. So you lay a foundation of prayer. Okay? Then the next, if for instance you're going as a missionary to another place, you pray Psalm 2 verse 8. Ask of me and I will give thee the heathen for an inheritance. Amen. Ask of me and I will give the nations as an inheritance for you. As an inheritance for you, my children, ask of me. And I will give the nations as an inheritance for you. Ask of me. Do you know that song? How many don't know it? Let's learn it. Ask of me. And I will give the nations as an inheritance for you. Where are the musicians? As an inheritance for you. My children, ask of me, and I will give the nations an inheritance for you. Ask of me, here am I. Send me to the nations as an ambassador for you. As an ambassador for you, my father, here am I, send me to the nations as an ambassador for you, here am I. Hallelujah. So you ask of the Lord and he will send you. The next one, First Chronicles chapter 4 verse 10, you pray, Lord, enlarge my tent. Enlarge my tent. Is that not what Jabez prayed? Whatever, enlarge my coast, sorry, my coast. God should expand you. God should deliver you from being one and two and three. And he should enlarge you, according to First Chronicles. Then you pray for the same church. Ezekiel 36, 37. You pray, Lord, increase them with men like a flock. That's what Ezekiel 36 and verse 37 says. Increase them with men like a flock. How many want God to increase you with men like a flock? Huh? Lift your hand. Lift your hand. If you want the Lord to increase you with men like a flock. All right, these are the topics you pray for. You pray to God, Lord, increase the people, with, increase them like a flock. Let them multiply. These are the prayers I have prayed. God has given me thousands of members today, thousands of people who belong to the ministry. Amen. The next one as soon as Zion traveled, she brought forth her children. All right, and Galatians 4 19, I travail in birth again 
for you. All these prayer topics are prayed. You pray them out and the Lord will hear your prayers. Increase me with men like a flock. Give me the nations. Give me the people. Send the men to me, Lord, from the north, from the south, from the east, from the west. Open the doors. Enlarge my coast. Bless me in the ministry. Lord, I commit myself to you. I commit the church in thy kingdom come. Let thy will be done. Send me to the nations. Use me in the nations. Lord, my Father, use me. Give me the heathen. Give me the heathen as an inheritance. Give them to me, Lord. Send the unbelievers to my life. Let them come into my ministry. Increase me. This is how to pray. Hallelujah. This is what you must call on God for. Call on God. God will hear you. Amen. It's time for this tea time Christianity where we are so soft, we cannot do anything, we cannot travail, eh? we cannot do anything hard. In the, anything you say that is hard, it sounds strange. We cannot sit down for a few hours to listen to the word of God. We cannot pray. Prayer meetings. Look, I used to belong to a group, that guy, the guy give the prayer, when he waves his finger like this, he says, shall we pray? That's the end. You will pray for hours. There was a, a, a group, he, the guy would say, shall we pray? He goes to town. He goes to town to do so many things and he comes back. Everybody is still praying. When you come there, you not know who is the leader of the prayer meeting. Somebody is lying on the floor here. Somebody is lying over there. Somebody is lying here. People are praying, calling on God, crying to God. That's why today Ghana is, has 70% Christians in the last census that we did. 70% Christianity in Ghana. And one of our highest export commodities are pastors. We export more pastors than South Africa does. South Africa, which are the pastors you export? Where can you find pastors from this country who have gone to other countries to do great works there? Very few. At, at least I don't know of any. But you can find Ghanaians who are in other nations doing great works. And you can find Nigerians in other countries doing great works. But you can't hear of South Africans going anywhere to do anything. But God is changing it. God is going to raise up South Africa. Just as politically, South Africa has gone out of its shell. Spiritually also, this country is going to come out of its shell and go out to the nations and also affect the nations. Ask of me. I will give the nations. Pray for the nations. Ask for these are prayers I used to pray. Today I have churches and fruit in almost 40 different countries of the world. And I'm not an old man. I'm still very young. Can't you see that I'm young? Do I look old? No. Yeah, I'm still a young, a very young man. You can ask my wife. <laughs> Amen. Are you listening to me? Are you here? So ladies and gentlemen, this is what we should pray. Ask of me and I will give the nations as an inheritance for you. As an inheritance for you, my children, ask of me. And I will give the nations as an inheritance for you, ask of me. Then we sing, here am I, send me to the nations as an ambassador for you. As an ambassador for you, my father, here am I. Send me to the nations as an ambassador for you, here am I. Ask of him. He said it. I didn't say. He said, ask me. I'll give you the unbelievers. I'll give you those that don't believe in God. I'll give them to you as an inheritance. An inheritance is something that comes to you easily. Without struggle, you just receive it. And that's how church grows. The people come, you receive them. You don't know how they came. You don't know what exactly you did that made them come. You have to ask God. Ask God. Increase the people like a flock. Let them multiply. Let them increase. Let there be a large crowd here. Lord, take me out of 20 and 30. Take me out of 10 and 12. Give me an increase. Give me a large crowd. Cause the nations to come to me. Send me to the nations. Use me in the nations. God can use you. 
God will use you if you call on God and if you ask Him to help you and to bless you. Hallelujah. Can I have an amen? amen. The next one, stand to your feet, everybody. Be a motivational leader. I'm showing you how to start a church. I've written a nice little book, How to Start a Church. Chapter 8. Be a motivational... You cannot be a dull leader if you want to start a church. You come to church and there are only three people there. And you tell them, I wonder if God is with us. I don't know why only three people came to church today. I always was wondering when they asked me to come and start a church, whether it would work. Let's pray and see if God's mercy will come upon us today. Oh, Father, why are we only three today? No, no. If you do that, all the people will run away. The Bible says, and David encouraged himself in the Lord his God. 1 Samuel chapter 30 verse 6. David encouraged himself. If you are going to start a church, you must know how to encourage yourself. I said you must know how to encourage yourself. Nobody will be there to encourage. You are the leader and you are the one who says you are starting a church. So you must have a lot of self-encouragement scriptures. Otherwise, you'll be so sad all the time. Look, church work is very discouraging. Sometimes you don't know why the people come. Sometimes they don't come. Look at Pastor Oliver. He's invited me to come all the way from Ghana. It's because of him that I came here. I would not have come here. And then you do a program and you ask people to come and sometimes they don't even come. And they don't even show up. You go through great efforts, great expense, great whatever, and people don't even show up. Church work can be very discouraging. If you don't harden yourself and encourage yourself, you will stop very soon, I am telling you. I have had to encourage myself a thousand times over. And if you are going to be encouraged, if you are going to be a, what do you call it, you must encourage yourself. Amen. Now, how do you encourage yourself? There are certain scriptures you must know before you start a church. And these are what I call self-encouragement scriptures. How many want to know those verses? So that when the time of discouragement comes, you release those scriptures. All right, it is on page 20. It says, one of them, you must encourage the people and tell them, although our beginning, when you come and there are only four people in church, one of the first things you must tell, though our beginning be small, our latter end shall be greatly increased. <laughs> Lift up your hand and shout hallelujah, somebody. Yeah, immediately we'll be encouraged. And that, Job chapter 8 verse 7, that's how you have to talk to the people. Though our beginning is small, you tell your church, Mere went International Interfellowship. Though our beginning be small, our latter end shall be greatly increased. Lift your hand and shout amen. And the four people will lift their hand and shout amen. Immediately there will be a good atmosphere in the church. There will be joy. There will be happiness. So you must, you must encourage yourself. You must encourage yourself. The people must be encouraged. You must have encouraging scripture. Don't come there with scriptures. If it be the will of the Lord to bless us, God moves in a mysterious way. He's wonders to perform. Sometimes he destroys churches. Sometimes he builds them. God is the one who lifts and he's the one who destroys, brings us down. And we don't know what he's doing today, but we are praying that in case the Lord will show favor on us, he should please bless us today. No, no. You must tell the people, ladies and gentlemen, I tell you, I have a word for you today. Though our beginnings be small, our latter end, the end of these four people, the end of this church, the end of these five people, the end of these ten people shall be greatly increased. Lift your hand and give the Lord a shout of praise, somebody. How many are already encouraged with that scripture? I myself am encouraged. You see, when I read the scripture, I become happy. <laughs> Another scripture that you must use is better is the end of a thing than the beginning thereof. Anytime you are doing a program on the first day, people don't come much. You must always know the end is always better. A crusade, the end is always better. First day is different from second day, is different from third day. 
So you must have this scripture. Better is the end. When you come and you tell them, ladies and gentlemen, today God is going to move, God is going to bless us, but I want you to know something, that the end of this thing we are doing will be better than the beginning. Do you believe it? And the people say, we believe it. Come on, give the Lord a shout. And they give the Lord a shout, and you are moving on. Better is the thing. Okay. Then another verse you can use is Zechariah chapter 4, verse 10. It says, for who has despised the day of small things? You tell them, are you despising a small thing? You, you see it small like that, don't despise it. For the Bible says, who has despised the day of small things? Though it's the beginning is small, the latter end shall be greatly increased. God is going to do it. Don't despise this small way. Many people who you see as very large ministries and so on, they have been in the ministry for years and years and years and have suffered for years. And at the end, the Lord blesses them. So don't despise the day of small things. How many are ready to motivate your people? Amen. Huh? Amen. Amen. You need shamelessness. Amen. Shamelessness. Now, shamelessness is a word, anadea. Anadea. It means shamelessness. All right? You got to preach hope. Amen. Don't shout at the people. Amen? Because nobody came. I said, because no one came, don't shout at them. Don't rebuke them. You don't love God. Most of you are backslidden. No. Just encourage them. Preach hope. Don't shout at them. Don't tell them, all of you, you are useless sheep. I follow you for nothing. No. Tell them that God is going to bless. Hallelujah. Encourage them. Preach hope. It's going to work. It's going to get better. Because the Lord is with us. Can I have an amen? amen. Then the next thing we need is anadea, which is shamelessness. In Luke 11, verse 8, the Bible says, I say unto you, Though he will not rise and give him because he is his friend, yet because of his importunity, or the Greek word is anadea, which means shamelessness, shamelessness, he will rise and give him as many as he needeth. I want you to know that we need anadea or shamelessness to have a church and to start churches. Shameless. You must be shameless. Don't be ashamed. Are you ashamed? Don't be ashamed of a small thing. Don't be ashamed of a little thing. Don't be ashamed of starting a church. Don't be ashamed of the little thing that is involved when you start a church. And it looks like this little group in a little classroom is not established with all these screens and lights and plants and flowers and music and dancing and all that. Don't be ashamed. Don't be ashamed. Are you ashamed? Are you ashamed? When I say, are you ashamed, say, we are not ashamed. Are you ashamed? 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 You must not be ashamed. Why should you be ashamed? Who are you serving? Is it not the Lord Jesus? Amen. It's the Lord Jesus who will mark you and say, well done, good and faithful servants. Well done. Well done. Well done. Well done. Well done. Don't look at what people, most of us are so ashamed of our churches. We are so ashamed of what we've been involved with. We are so ashamed of our works. We think that our works are nothing. We think our works are, you, you compare, you know when I started doing miracles, eh, the devil used to tell me, these are not miracles. These are not miracles. The devil used to say, you, you see, you better stop what you are doing. Real people who are doing real miracles, this is not what they are having. And I said, Really? So I decided to visit people who are doing miracles. And I decided to watch Benny Hinn. And I decided to watch anyone whom the devil says is the one who is doing the real miracle. And when I watched closely, I realized that ah, they have the same kind of miracles that I have. And I said, the devil, shut up. You can't, that one will not work on me anymore. Ladies and gentlemen, are you ashamed? Are you ashamed? Are you ashamed? ashamed? If you are not going to be humble like a little child, you cannot advance in the kingdom of God. You will have to stop. When you try and pray for the sick, let's say we pray for the sick. Say, Somebody says he's healed. Craig, come. Come. And he's, Craig says, oh, I'm healed. Uh, my, my waist was paining me. Here was paining me. And it's gone. You know, 
somebody will look and say, a doctor will look and say, I mean, what is this? Waste is paid, he's gone. Here is paid, he's gone. So, uh, but I, I am a doctor. And the Lord said, don't be ashamed. Are you ashamed? Because I've allowed all these testimonies and all these miracles, I have seen the blind see before. I've seen the deaf hear. I've seen the dead raised. I've seen people come out of crib wheelchair. I've seen all kinds of miracles because I'm not ashamed of the little ones and of the little things that God brings to me. If you are not ashamed of the three people and the five people and the ten people, you will see a hundred people. You will see two hundred people. You will see five hundred people. You will see one thousand people. Don't be ashamed. I said, don't be ashamed. I said, don't be ashamed. I said, don't be ashamed. Are you ashamed? Are you ashamed? Are you ashamed? We are not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Why should you be ashamed? Stand on a, a crusade platform and preach the gospel. Preach. Where is the picture of the megaphone preaching? You see, there's a lot in the little book. Are you preaching here? Yes. Show them preaching. Show them. He's preaching. I don't know who he's preaching to. You see him? That's Pastor Kingsley. You see he's holding his megaphone. And these two guys are Namibians. Are they Namibians? And are they interpreting or what? They are helping by reading. <laughs> you see, he's not ashamed. He's, he's not mad. <laughs> Amen. He's not mad. Do you understand what I'm saying? He's very educated. He has two degrees from the university. He has left what he's doing and he's standing there holding a megaphone. Look at him. Shouting to the megaphone. <laughs> Is it not a wonderful thing? You see, if you are ashamed, hallelujah, if you are ashamed of the gospel, you cannot go far because it is a shameful sort of looking thing. You just have to be shameless. Shameless. I said shameless. The Bible says this man was sleeping in his house. His mother, uh, they were sleeping. And this guy said his friend has come to ask him for bread. Look, I tell you, if I go to my hotel and they say, oh, there's no room service, it's closed, 11 o'clock. I, even if I was very hungry, I don't think I would call Pastor Oliver to ask him for bread. I mean, I'll just sleep. Do you understand what I'm saying? I'll just sleep. I'll just say, look, I mean, I cannot disturb Pastor Oliver. I call him, say, I need some bread, or call his wife and Sister Jean, you know. I'm very, 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 I know the hotel is very far from his house. I mean, I, I don't know whether he has bread. I'll feel, I'll, I'll feel bad. You know? But I think that if I were to call him and say, Pastor Oliver, I need some bread tonight. The way it is, I think he would come in. Because he would, he would think that there's some, there must be some reason for him to call me at 1 a.m. to ask me for bread. Pastor Oliver, would you come to the hotel to give me bread? <laughs> huh? Would you come? I would. He says he would. Craig, if I called you, would you give me bread? Yes. 3 a.m.? Yes. Yeah, because there must be reason for him to put aside his shame and call at 3 a.m. say, I need bread. Maybe I'm sick. Maybe I'm dying. Maybe something is happening and I need bread to rescue me. I mean, there must be some reason because he has put aside all diplomacy and behavior, distinguished behavior and every diplomacy and he's calling for bread. He said, and I need butter to bread and butter. <laughs> The Bible says, if he will not answer because of his shamelessness, the word is another, it's not, it's not importunity. Importunity is not a word we use. You go and check your Bible. The word in Luke 11, they say importunity in the King James. You check the Greek is anaidea. And it means to be shameless. If you have a Dick's Bible, you can check on the side, it's there. Anaidea. Shameless. You need shamelessness to be a preacher. A gospel preacher, a crusade preacher. Look at the guy. Where is he? Shameless. <laughs> he 
is shouting on the top of the hill. Look at that. <laughs> as if, as if, as if he, he, can, he does not think. He's just standing there shouting with a megaphone. As if he has not been to school. Meanwhile, oh, he can lecture at the university. In fact, he's even doing a PhD. This is a PhD standing there shout. He has put his hand behind his back and he's just explaining the gospel. <laughs> <laughs> Hallelujah. Is it not a wonderful thing? Amen. Amen. How many are going to be shameless for Jesus Christ? Amen. Shameless for Jesus Christ. When I got saved and I was speaking in tongues in my house, my mother was wondering what was wrong with me. And even tongues. You think about Now let's analyze. What, what is that? <laughs> <laughs> what have you said? <sighs> you see, we don't think about it now because we all speak in tongues. But if you analyze it carefully, you realize that it's like, it's like rubbish. I started a song where they were the wrong key and they had to turn back, change the key. Or started a song and it, everything didn't work out. Look, we have to start again. Has it not happened in this church before? Yeah. Amen. All right. You may be seated. Are you tired? <laughs> Don't be tired. Tomorrow is the last day we are finished. Amen. The next step to starting a church, witnessing and follow up. Witnessing and following up. You must witness, you must follow up. Amen. Whatsoever a man sows, he shall reap. Okay, the next step to starting a church is avoid certain mistakes in starting your church. Number one, do not hurriedly appoint people to leadership. For instance, don't hurriedly say, this is my worship leader. Because you may find out after singing two songs that she has a very bad voice and cannot be the worship leader. And you've already made her the worship leader. And now to change her, she'll be so offended. Now you have to, she'll be offended and she now wants to leave the church because you made her worship leader. Then when Sister Rose came, you prefer Sister Rose. And it's because you like Sister Rose, that's why you are making Sister Rose the worship leader. And it's not because she sings better than I, because I sing better than she does. And you like her, really you are in love with her. And that's why you chose her instead of me. All kinds of confusion. So all you do is you ask her, just sing some, just lead the worship for today. But don't anoint her and say, you are now the worship leader of the church. You are nothing. You are just leading worship for today. Can I have an amen? amen. Number two, do not be discouraged because of fluctuating attendance. Church members, some come, even as I'm preaching, some people are watching. Do you know what it feels like when you are preaching and people walk out? You don't have to be discouraged by all these things. Some will come today. Some will not come. They will come more today. Today, 15 people came. Tomorrow, 17. Yeah. My friend, I just want to say, if you count the cost before you came to start the church, don't use what is happening, what people are doing and saying. That is not what we use to, to start a church or to run a church. If we are to do that, we will never do anything with the church. You see, when I meet with small groups, I know, I know in myself that that is the most powerful thing. Look, people who laugh at me, they wonder, do you have power? Do you have your church? Let me ask you, start one church. Start two churches. By God's grace, I've been able to start about 400. Count how many churches. With members in countries, in nations, with properties and buildings. I have employees in many countries. That's the fruit of what I'm doing. And I'll be meeting with my small group, people wondering what you are doing. One guy came around my church in the evening, he was saying, what is this? He was talking. I said, come here at midnight. Come here at 2 a.m. You see all, the whole car park is full. I'm still meeting with some few people. Nobody sees it, but that's the real work. That's what Jesus did when he met with the disciples. That's the real, that's the real. What we are doing here, this is the real building of churches and building of people into ministers. 
what I am teaching you here is very valuable. How to actually start a church by somebody who has started many churches. So when you go and start your church, don't be worried by attendance. Three people came today, next time ten people came, next time only one person came, next time twenty people came. That is how church people are. That is how even pastors are like that. Pastors are some of the worst sheep. If you ever have an association of pastors, it's a very difficult thing to control pastors. Come for this meeting, they don't come. They'll come late, they come like this. Pastors often, we become proud. After a short while of becoming pastors, we feel we know everything. Meanwhile, we don't know anything at all. Our ministries are a phantom of what is supposed to be. Our ministries are dwarfs, dwarf ministries and midget ministries. Midgets, that's what we have as ministries. Our fruits are far less far less from what it's supposed to be. Maybe even many of our fruit will not even count in heaven. And yet we are so filled with pride, we will not humble ourselves, we will not learn from anybody, we will not learn from anywhere, we will not read the books we should read, we will not study what we should study, we will not listen to things we should listen to, and so our ministries don't progress, and God has to raise up children whom we don't respect, and they become whatever they are supposed to be. What we were supposed to be, they become it for us. So, do not be worried by, uh, what do you call it, fluctuating attendance. People's some way behavior, as I call it. People's attitudes. Huh? When you are preaching, don't be worried by people's faces. When you have somebody whose face is very difficult to see, look away from the person when you are preaching. Anytime you get near the person, turn your eyes away from the person. Because there are people, when you see them, you become so frightened. <laughs> One day I met with some of my pastors, and he was telling me, he said, he said, and his, I mean his wife was, they said, when I'm preaching and I see my wife's face, sometimes I become so scared. <laughs> because sometimes the wives can be so inexpressive. They can be so dull and so, I mean, unfriendly looking. When you are preaching, you see, the guy, so he, he said to me, Bishop, this morning, it was Sunday. He said, this morning, I was preaching. And when I saw her face, I became worried. I was, I, I was afraid. I thought, am I saying something wrong? Have I done something wrong? Am I doing something wrong? So I told him, don't look at your wife's face when you are preaching. Till after you finish preaching, <laughs> then you look at her face. Amen? Yeah. I mean, it happens to me to sometimes I look at my wife and then I immediately become worried. I say, hey, what am I doing wrong? <laughs> what am I saying wrong? Have I said something wrong? Am I doing something wrong? Oh, is she angry with me? What? A oh. So you have to know where to look till after. Then you look and then you see if you are okay. Amen? We'll be closing soon because I feel you want to close. Number three. Do not rent an expensive hall. Amen? Do not rent an expensive hall. Why are you going to rent an expensive hall? Do you want to bring it to the church? One church that you've gone to rent, we have to pay 5,000 rands every week. <laughs> for, for a hall. There are free halls. Amen? Oh, I said amen. amen. There are free halls, cheap halls. Small, there's nobody in your church, no income, no offering. Why do you want us to rent an expensive hall? Amen. Hallelujah. Do not keep the church's money in your house or in your personal account. When there's small offering, they go and put it in your bank. It's not a good idea. It's church money. Separate your money from church money. They are different things. Amen. So, the next thing, you don't need a complimentary card. Things that you don't need to start a church. Number one, complimentary card. You don't need a complimentary card to start a church. Do you, have, do you know what a complimentary card is? Or a business card. What do you call it here? You don't need a business card. Some people go and print, Reverend so-and-so. International Fellowship of Interstate. <laughs> Reverend so-and-so of whatever church. It's not necessary. 
with a briefcase. You don't need a briefcase to start a church. Amen. Church constitution. You don't need a constitution to start a church. What's a constitution? It's a Bible. Amen. I said the constitution is the Bible. You don't need all these things are not necessary. The church is the people. People going around, I'm, I'm forming my constitution, I'm writing my... Look, when the church grows, the constitution you wrote when you were three members and four, it will not apply. All these things, they are all unnecessary things. Church flag. You don't need a church flag. You don't need church colors. Amen? All right. And then you start a network of churches. Amen. So ladies and gentlemen, um, all these are important in starting a church. How many think you can start a church now? Raise your hand if you feel you can start a church. Can you? Wonderful. Now, in order to start a church, all right, and we are going to be closing with this. In order to start a church, we need one great ingredient. Amen. And it's what we call the anointing. Amen. Everybody say the anointing. anointing. Say the anointing. anointing. You need to be anointed by the Lord. Amen. 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 Now, how can you become anointed? And what I want to share with you is one of the most important messages of all time. Because... You can do the work of God without the anointing. But you can also do the work of God with the anointing. You can teach. Now, everything that we do in the church has its counterpart in the secular world. For instance, counseling is done by pastors. But it's also done by psychologists. And it's done by anybody. Even a fool can give you counsel on the bus, at the bus stop. Do you understand? So, counseling is done in the world. Teaching. There are people in these classrooms who are not anointed and they are teaching every day. Is that not so? Is that not so? Yes. Social works, distributing food and helping people, helping HIV patients and so on, is done by non-church workers. Is that not so? What else do churches do? Loving people and caring for people. There are many non-believing organizations which care for people. They love people. Oprah Winfrey and all these other people. They all care for people and they show love. Michael Jackson and all that. They all give their money to do some of these things from time to time. Is that not so? So ladies and gentlemen, motivational speaking. Farrakhan is one of the best motivational speakers I know of. But he's not even a Christian. You understand? So speaking and preaching to drive people and to motivate people is not necessarily something that you do. Are you getting me? Because you are a pastor. You can do it in the world. You can do it without anointing. But now you need to become anointed. When you become anointed, the works that you are doing will be done by the Lord himself. It's God who will do the works. Amen. And we need to become anointed people, anointed pastors, anointed ministers. Now, I want to give you three reasons why we all need to become anointed. Amen. Number one. Number one. Jesus Christ did not, are you listening to me? Did not try to preach the gospel until he became anointed. Jesus Christ. He did not preach for 30 years, he did not do miracles, he did not do anything until he became anointed. And when did he become anointed? When he came back from the wilderness, he came to John for baptism. After the baptism, he came out and the dove came upon him, which was the Holy Spirit. And John the Baptist had said, when you see the person on whom the Spirit of God will fall, he is the one who is the anointed one. Hallelujah. Are you listening? And after that, Jesus went out preaching. Amen. So that's the first reason why you must be anointed. What's the first reason why you must be anointed? Because Jesus Christ did not preach until he became anointed. Amen. Are you listening? Are you listening? Number two. 
the disciples were asked not I'm preaching now from another book called Catch the Anointing, but the book is not here. When it comes in the evening, I'll, I'll give it to you. Catch the Anointing. Jesus Christ told his disciples, do not go out and preach until you receive the Holy Spirit. Do you understand? So they were asked to wait. Do you understand? Now, does that mean you should not preach before you become anointed? You must, because the same Jesus sent his disciples earlier on going to go preaching. So there is a time when you are preaching, but it is a form of training. So sometimes pastors start churches, but you start the churches as a form of training for you yourself. Are you listening to me? And I, for instance, I started preaching long before I actually had an experience where I believe that I became anointed. Oh, yes. Ministry, you do the same thing without anointing. At a point, you become anointed. The disciples were sent out, they went preaching. No anointing. But they were preaching and they were getting results. Demons were coming out, things were happening, but they, were, they had not yet been filled with the Holy Ghost. They had not yet been anointed. Ladies and gentlemen, a lot of the ministry work is just training. And that's why when you never start, you never start your training. All the things that I'm sharing with you, if you had started churches, they would be far more relevant to you. If in a year's time we have a program like this and many of you have started churches, what I will come to say here will have ten times more meaning to you. Ten times. Ten times more. But because you haven't actually started, when I'm preaching I say, uh, be a motivational leader. Tell the people, though your beginning is small, later. because you haven't started a church, you don't know what I'm talking about. If you've done some before, you will look and say, this... Huh, I'm glad I have this scripture. Because the last time when we went to church, there were only three people. I didn't know what to say. Hallelujah. Are you listening to me? I'm preaching. Point your hand towards me. Say you are preaching a good message. Is it a good message? It's a very good message. Listen, you, you must... That's why we have to follow T.L. Osborne's advice. Don't be spooky. Just go and start something. Stop praying about things. Just do something. As you do it, you have now entered training. You're training. You're training. You're training for the work that God has called you to. You're training. He will train you. As you work, the best form of training is doing something. Look, even in medicine, when you qualify with your first degree as a, as a doctor, right, and you say you want to be a surgeon, the, the formula is simple. You watch one, you assist one, and then you do one. If you want to see how to learn, how to operate, we don't go for classes to write notes how to remove a baby from whatever or how to deliver. I had to deliver 21 babies with my hands. Before I can say that I'm, before I can say I'm a doctor, a doctor who can stand a labor ward and deliver a child without people dying. It's not by writing notes. You have to do it. I say you have to do it. You have to, and, and before we deliver 20, we have to watch 10. Yeah, you have to watch 10 and sign. Each one you watch, the, the consultant will sign. You've watched this one, you've watched this one, you've watched up to 10. When you've watched 10, you catch 21. Or 23. Before you know. And then you have to catch twins, bridge, and other types of delivery. When they are coming two in one, head is coming, this place is coming first, different places are coming. Before say you are a doctor, it's not by writing notes and then you write and the head shall come first and then the arm, then you will take the left arm and you pull this arm, then you squeeze the head. And so, when the head is coming, you see only this place is coming out of that hole. You even wonder whether it can come. And then before you see the thing is pushing and how to encourage it to come out. To, to be encouraging the thing to come out before you even cut the woman and do an episiotomy for the baby, the baby's head to come alive. And when the baby is coming, it can easily fall down. And whether there's a cord around the neck and so many things, you have to do it. You can't talk about it. Read books. Listen to tapes on how to deliver a baby. Go and deliver one. Are you listening to me? 
Are you listening to me? That's why we have to start churches. Many of you, that's where you'll be filtered out. That's where we'll see those who are determined by starting. Start it. Do it. Don't be afraid, I'm telling you. The work is not for you. You are working for God. God will bless you. God will help you. God will lift you up. He will put you in the right place. And as you do the work, that's when you will even be surprised and you see what you can do. You will be surprised at what you can do. That is why I'm so much earnest in my heart to encourage you to actually, huh? actually do what? Do something. And stop being what? Spooky. Let's actually begin. Let's actually start. It will not affect anything. It will rather be a blessing. All of us will become more mature as we preach and as we do the work of God. You'll be surprised at what is in you. Huh? Look at me. I've not seen, I mean, I don't know, I, I've not seen Jesus before like face to face. I'm only believing. Uh, I'm only believing. Just like you. How I have prayed to see Jesus. I want to see him so badly. I prayed about it so much. Lord, if I can only see you, please appear. So as I pray, I'll close my eyes, I'll pray, pray, pray. <laughs> and he's not there. Sometimes I see something move and I say, is it the Lord who, who is coming to me? I want him to come to me so much. Because, you know, I need to talk to him. I want to ask him whether what I'm doing is right. I want him to correct me now. Because I don't want to hear that in heaven. I don't want to go to heaven and hear so many things. I want to hear it now. So that I can make adjustments now before my judgment day. How many want the same? Now you are not praying for it, so you, I don't see him. But I want to see him. And I want him to talk to me. But I, I still believe in just like you. And look at how many books I've written. That are published. About half a million of them. Look at all these countries that I'm preaching in and having churches in. Without any vision of Jesus. I mean a vision of Jesus where I see him. I'm just using my beliefs. And my conviction. Without being too spooky. When Pastor Oliver invited me to come here, do you think I had a vision? Ah, oh, says the Spirit of God. Oh, he invited me. I said, why not? I'll go. Why not? I, I can go. I, I, why shouldn't I go? I'll go. I pray, I pray. If the Lord tells me not to come, I won't come. I pray about it, but I mean, I, I, I don't see why. Unless the Lord particularly tells me, don't go here or don't go there or whatever. I don't, he, not, he usually doesn't say such things to me. Does he say such things to you usually? Don't go out today. Don't, don't go out on Friday. Friday is the 13th. Don't go out. Don't do this. Do that. <laughs> Spookiness is going to away from the will of God and the blessings that he has for us. Can I have an amen? amen. One day, one of my pastors, he came to my house to, to spend the night. And uh, later on, he was telling me, he said he had an experience. Jesus came to the room. Upstairs, he was staying. My room is next, next to his. He said Jesus came into his room and put something like fire into his hand. And he was anointed. That time, Benny Hinn was having a crusade. It was the second day of the crusade. And put something like fire in his hand. And then disappeared. When he told me, I pretended to be happy. And I pretended to be happy because, you see, I am, the, I am the owner of the house. And I'm in the house praying every day for Jesus to appear to me. You get what I'm saying? And if the Lord is going to appear, why doesn't he say hello to me before going to see the visitors? <laughs> I was very jealous, but I just laughed. Oh, praise the Lord. Glory. Glory to God. <laughs> I didn't say anything. <laughs> I am still praying to see the Lord. 
But if he will not come, I cannot sit down and be spooky all my life. I still have to get up and do something. I have to write the book. I have to preach. I have to say what is written. Even if I'm tired, I have to do it. I just have to keep on and be faithful. If the Lord wants to do some spiritual whatever like that, that is great. But if not, I have to keep on step by step. And that's what we have to do. We have to say, how many of you want to work for God? How many of you want to be pastor? Come. And, and that is it. We can't use spookiness and say, the Spirit has shown that this, and the Spirit has shown that this, and the Spirit, the Spirit hasn't shown anything. If you want to come, just come and let's work. Can I have an amen? amen. So it's time for us to press on. All right, so the disciples, they had to wait. The third reason why we need to get anointing or become anointed is Elisha and Elijah, the example of Elisha and Elijah. When Elijah was going to die, or was going to go to heaven, Elijah asked Elisha, what do you want from me? Are you listening? What do you want from me? And what did Elisha say? I want your car. I want your house. I want your property. He was too clever for that. When you walk with an anointed person, you must know something. You see, let me tell you, there is a great deception when you see an anointed person. Sometimes you look, you say, oh, it's his education. Because he's educated, he's able to do this and that. Sometimes you say, oh, because he's handsome, when he preaches, a lot of people come to the church. Or you look and say, because he's got money, people come to the church. Or you say, oh, because he's located his church in Wentworth, people come to the church. Or because he put the church, uh, it opens at 9 o'clock instead of 7 o'clock, people come to the church. We have a thousand reasons why the churches work. And anytime you see a man of God, we have a million reasons why his ministry is working. That means you are not clever when you have those reasons. You must become like Elisha and know that there is one reason above all reasons. The reason of reasons. The mother of all reasons. The reason behind the ministry. The secret behind every miracle and every power and every accomplishment in the ministry is one thing and only one thing. And that is the anointing and the spirit of the Lord that is upon the person. Yeah. You are not wise when you attribute the great work of God to something natural. It means you have not understood spiritual principles. Amen. Oh, yes. You can attribute it to this or to that or to that. But ultimately, it is because of the anointing of the Spirit of God. That is what is the cause of the blessing and anointing. If you admire somebody's ministry... Behind it all is the anointing, the gift of God. The Bible says, faithful is he who called, who also will do it. The one who called is the one who will do it. I am not doing the works. He is doing the works. Jesus said, I can do nothing except what I see my father do. God wants to do great works with all of us. And he wants to do it with our ministries. And he wants to do it through the anointing. So you need to catch the anointing. Amen. How many realize that what you need is the anointing? How many realize that what you need is the anointing? You need to become anointed. Amen. Become anointed. God will bless you. So I've written a book called Catch the Anointing. All right? The mega church. You know, ladies and gentlemen, I can share so many things with you, but ultimately you are going to have to read for yourself Learn for yourself. Anyone who's going to become a minister, a pastor, you have to learn for yourself. You have to read for yourself. You have to grow for yourself. You have to learn. You have to desire it for yourself. All right? Now, there are many keys to becoming anointed, you know. But um, I don't want to go into those keys right now. We'll go into those things later on. So let's stand to our feet. I want us to close. How many want to be anointed? Are you sure you want to be anointed? Do you desire the anointing enough to get it? Key number one to getting the anointing, desire. Key number one, I want to give you several keys to the anointing. And one of them is desire. 
you must desire the anointing of the Lord. And God will bless you as you have a desire. Amen. Everybody say desire. desire. Say desire. desire. Do you really desire the anointing? Yes. Are you sure you desire the anointing? Yes. Are you sure you desire the anointing? Yes. Amen. Lift your hands to the Lord. Anointing fall on me. Anointing for let the power of the Holy Ghost fall on me, anointing fall on me, anointing, anointing fall on me, anointing. Oh, on me. Let the power of Holy Ghost fall on me. I know fall on me. Oh, yes, Lord. Thank you for your anointing. Thank you for your grace. Thank you, Lord, for your blessing. Thank you for your blessing, Lord. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you. For your blessings, your blessings, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, yes, Lord. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for the anointing. Thank you for the anointing. Lord. Yes, 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 yes. Yes, yes, Lord. Thank you for your blessing, for your anointing, and your mercy, and your grace. Thank you for this anointing, Lord. Thank you for this anointing, Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, thank you for this anointing. The Brele Sebara la Babri di Vesucole Bridi Viki Paralevi di Bridi di Vesci di Bredi Sibiri Vedi. The Zibele Cabrada le Major Molari Bredi Vesci di Bredi Vedi Shidi. Bale de Rebishima la Dan de Bredi Kese Molara la Maman de Rede Vedi. Oh God, oh God, oh God, Gola Cresa, Gola Cresa, Gola Cresa. Mendele Borosala Rila, Brendele Borosalida, Brendeles Giblaras, Calabrobisse, Calabrobisse, Dribasha Barbeleso, Gemble, Zamble, Crubele, Sabolali, Manlandele, Bellido, La Barra, La Zabara, Navara, Navara, Pariandele Veredilo la Barara la Barido Vedere le Vedere le Vedere le Vedere le Vedere Fariabala da Radibere de Vedere le 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 Vedere le
Palanda la balananda, paralanda la balananda. Yanda la balananda, yamba la balananda, yanda la balananda. Jai brada lada, jai brada lada, jai brada lada, jai brada lada, jai brada lada. Jai brada lada, jai brada lada, jai brada lada. Yes. Listen. 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 I'm giving you keys to this great anointing. Amen. One of the keys is desire. And I want to read a verse from the Bible. It says, The Lord directs your hearts into the love of God and into the patient waiting for Christ. May God direct your hearts into the love of God. You see, if you are here and your heart is not directed to love God, you get it? You never really love His anointing and love God. So you never really qualify. You may have all the steps associate with the man of God, lay hands on you, this and that. But you need to love God. You need, your heart needs to be directed to love Him and love Him higher and more than anything else. I want you to lift your hands and I want you to ask the Lord. If there's any organist or musician here, please. I want you to just ask the Lord. Lord, Direct my heart. Direct my heart to love you, to desire you, to want you in the name of Jesus. Just lay your hands on your heart right now. It's coming on you right now, wherever you are. The Lord is directing your heart. He's directing your heart to love him. To love him. To love him. Oh God. Not to love money. Or to love position. Or to love wealth. But to love him. To love him. To love him. May God direct your heart to love him. May God direct your heart to love him. May God direct your heart to love him. She barala subala balaba kabara la badari. Ora basa baladu barala badari hode de 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 de. Lo barala la babanda la la babanda la babanda la babanda. May he direct your heart to love him, to desire. Bible says if anyone desires the office, he desires a good thing. May your heart be directed to love him, to desire, to desire. His great anointing. His great anointing. Le barakazara balakazara bakalazadajala. Shali baralaza baladara kabalara la bazubara la vadasta. Le brele zubala. Le breze lubraza. 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 Le zebre zulabra. Le breze bruzala. Verilido de Vrala, de Verilido de Vralada, de Verilido de Vralada. Lege, 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 lege. Ha revese, 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 revese. Labra la zabra no labra, se lo verede se verede. Loro volara lava, loro volava lava, loro volara lava. Oh God, oh God, oh God, oh God, oh God. Le breze, le jobrozala, le breze, le jobrozala, brezejala, bredegesene. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Ayabal abre abro abra azabra abro zabrave abreve le zubrava la gibre de blues le gare gare gibre le gare anulale. Arle di zora drovili gibre di li 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 
I love you. 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 Abraba la braba la basa. Abra la bada za bada la bada za bada la bada za bada za la bada za bada za I love you. I love you. Abaza kredeshe. Abaza prudekeleshe de. Abra baza jana ki do lebe de lebe de. I love you. I love you. Kabala baradabala. Shabalabra. Oh God, I love you. I choose you. I choose you, Lord. Abarala barabala. Abarabala barabala barabala. I choose you, Lord. I choose you, Lord. I choose you, Lord. Oh God, oh God, oh God. I choose you, Lord. I prefer you, Lord. Oh la sabra da shabra da vala da vala la la vala la la vala la la. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. How many believe that God is giving you a desire today? I believe it. I believe it. The next thing that is a key to becoming anointed is to ask for it. The Bible says, if any of you then, being evil, know how to give good gifts to your children. Luke 11 verse 13, how much more shall your heavenly father Give the Holy Spirit or the anointing to him that asks, to them that ask him. I want us to kneel down and ask God to anoint us. Ask the Lord, Lord, anoint me. 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 How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and the Holy Spirit, Lord. Lord, we ask you. Lord, we are not asking for money. Lord, we are not asking for silver. Lord, we are not asking for gold. All we want is you, Lord. All we want is more of you. More of your anointing. Anoint us, Lord. We're tired of being dry. We're tired of being dry. Fill us with your anointing. Fill us with your anointing, Lord. Oh, God, oh, God, oh, God, oh, God. Abaya, 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 abaya. Awaya, hi, awaya. Oh God, oh God. Ya bola ba shada ba ba da ba ba. Thank Him right now. Thank Him for the anointing. Thank Him for the anointing. Thank Him for the anointing. You feel the anointing is over you. Just come to the front. You feel the anointing over you, just come to the front. You feel the anointing all over you, just come to the front. Oh, Spirit of the living God. Spirit of the living God. Pour out your anointing through your servant, Lord. To bless, Lord, to heal, to deliver. Holy Spirit of God. You sense the anointing on your life. Just come. Just come. Oh God, oh God, oh God. 
Parola Babanda la Babaria la Babanda. God is anointing. God is anointing. God is anointing. Oh God, Shaba Gobarala, Sabra Gadala Balabra, Le Barala Bosalabra Lala Balala. Oh God, fail us, Lord, with your great anointing, Lord. Your great anointing, Lord. Lord, as we lie before your altar, between the porch and the altar, Lord, bless us, oh God, with that gift, Lord. The gift that makes a difference, Lord. The Lord, we will not work with our own might and with our own strength, Lord. But faithful is he that called us. Who will perform it, Lord? Do it through these ones, Lord. Do a greater work, Lord, than we can imagine, Lord. Anoint us, O oh God. Anoint us, O oh God. Oh, call on God. Call on God. Kabere kazala shabere desele. Le sara dala dala bala shabala rabala. Dala brasa dola baralasa. Le bala karabala shalala babanda la barala. Ah, enter. I see. I see many people entering into the anointing, into the gifted realm. Oh, God's anointing is upon you now. Oh, Shabrika Zabara Lisibara. Allo bala la la bala la zebele di che brusti stalo. Beri lola, sabre lola, sabre lola, shababa. Oh, God. Oh, God. Oh, God. Galosa. Galosa. Chiloba. Da preso stare. Le bara balosa bara la bala bara la. Oh, call on God, call on God. Call on God. He's filling you. He's anointing you. He's touching you. Oh, God. We're tired of working with our own strength, oh, God. We're tired of working with our own ideas, Lord. Fail us, oh, God. Use us, oh, God. Let your spirit come upon us, O oh God. It's a new day, Lord. It's a new day. And it's a new anointing that we need for a new day. Abasabayabaya. We receive the new anointing for a new day. We walk in the new day with new life to do your will, O oh God. New life, Lord. For this work, oh God, you've called us. A new ministry, Lord. A new chapter, Lord. A new chapter is open, oh God. We accept it, Lord. We lift ourselves up into the realm you have called us to, Lord. We walk in the realm, oh God, of your grace and your anointing. Abba Sabala Bajabari Kulasa Baba. Oh God, oh God, oh God, oh God. And increase is determined, oh God. Your people shall be like a flock. There shall be a great multitude, oh God. They shall walk in your anointing and your power. They shall be like a great herd of flocks, oh God. We shall rejoice in the Lord our God. Allah no father la Dabri Sejavilani. There shall be no want and no lack. For the Lord shall do it. The Lord shall do it. The Lord shall do it. Blessed be the name of the Lord. I feel the anointing. I feel the anointing. I feel the anointing. The fellowship of the anointing. It is coming upon, it's coming upon you to bring you into the fellowship of the anointed ones. For you shall fellowship with anointed ones from henceforth. And you shall walk among the anointed ones and move along with the anointed ones. For the Lord shall do it again and bring you into the place of the anointing. That you shall know that it is he that calls 
and he also will do it. For the Lord shall take a step and another step in your direction and it shall greatly increase your work and the work of your hands. For his kingdom shall truly come and his kingdom shall be established. Oh, for what does it say of the Lord? What does it do of the Lord? The Lord doeth a new thing. What is this I hear? And the sound of running feet. Where are they going? They are running to the harvest. They are running with their hands dripping with oil. With anointing. What is this I see? Men are covered with oil. Men and women are covered with anointing oil. They are going, they are going far. They are going far. They are going, they are going. They are going to the uttermost parts of the earth. Bearing good tidings. Bringing good news. Covered with the oil and the gift of God. They are not ashamed. No, they are not ashamed. They are not ashamed of me and of my words. They are not ashamed of my words. They are not ashamed of my calling. For I sent them and they were not ashamed. Therefore I will not be ashamed of them. In that day when I come in glory, I will be proud of them. As they were proud of my calling. And they were proud of my giftings. And they were proud of all that I have blessed them with. I shall be proud of them in that day. I don't say free the verere. Oh, farido le se verere. Falora basadala. There shall not be lost except the sons of perdition. For the Father is greater than all. And that which he has given me, I have lost none. Father, thank you for these ones. They shall not be lost, O oh God, as they serve you. Blessed be your holy name. Blessed be your holy name. Kazo bara sabara so bara sabara so bara sabara so bara sabara la. La bere se bere de le bosha balande bere de sene. Bless these ones at the altar, O oh God. Fall on them, O oh God. Fall on them, O oh God. Cover somebody with a cloak, Lord. The cloak of Elijah, Lord. The mantle of Elijah, Lord. Fall on them, O God, by your power. By your Holy Spirit, Lord. Let them be gifted. Let them be sent to God. Going, Lord. Going, Lord. Going, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Stand to your feet, those of you on the front here, if you can. Just lift your hands to the Lord. Bless them, Lord. Bless, Lord. Bless. Oh, yes. Thank you for your blessing. Thank you for your blessing. Oh, yes. A superior anointing comes upon you. Receive it. Thank you for a superior anointing. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. May you be filled never the same again. May your hands be anointed. May you tremble with the grace and the oil of God. May you go bearing baskets of fruits into eternity. A champion of the Lord running and serving with him in his great field of harvest. Oh God, thank you. Thank you. Oh, 
Oh, God, thank you. Oh, yes. It's your day. It's your day. It's your day. Walk on. It's your day. Lift her up. Let me pray for her. Thank you. Father, thank you. Thank you. Thank you for a great grace. That's a point. Father, thank you. My God, thank you. Oh God. Shabbat Kabbalah Sabbat. Yes. My yes. God. Yes. It's my God. Yes. It's yes. my God. It's my God. Yes, Lord. Thank you. It's a blessing. Thank you. It's a blessing. Thank you, Lord, for your blessing. In the name of Jesus. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Some people, lift your hands to the Lord. Father, thank you. You are blessing these ones, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Some people, you will not expect them to do well. But the Lord is telling me, they are going to do very well. And they are going to go great in his house. Receive the anointing. Father, thank you. Thank you for your blessing. Thank you for your great blessing, Lord. What a privilege, Lord. I feel the grace of God here now. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for your grace and your gift, Lord. So precious it is, Lord. There is nothing like this gift that is given, has been given, Lord. Thank you. Blessed Jesus. Hallowed be thy name, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Hallelujah. What precious gift, Lord, is this that we do not deserve? We thank you for this cloak that is given, Lord. It shall cover everything, and we shall work by it. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Blessed be the name of the Lord, for his grace shall preserve you and shall keep you. Oh, yes, Lord. Thank you for this one, Lord. He shall be blessed, Lord. In your house. Oh yes. Be covered with the gift of God. Thank you, Jesus. Bless her, Lord. Bless her. Thank you, Jesus, for your great blessing. Hallelujah. Phil? Yes. Thank you, Jesus. Father, thank you for your blessing. Thank you, Jesus, for your blessing. Father, thank you for your blessing. Thank you, Jesus. Be blessed. Be filled. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Be blessed. Thank you, mighty God. Thank you, Jesus. May his grace fill you. May his anointing be upon you. Oh, yes. Give me that gentleman again. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, God. Oh, God. Never the same again. Never the same again. Never the same again, Lord. Oh, God. Oh, God. Oh, God. Yes. 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 For you must do well. You must. Your life depends on it. You must. You must run. You must do well. Oh God, thank you. Thank you for your gift. Thank you for your gift. Bless, Lord. Bless, Lord. Bless, Jesus. Thank you. Oh, yes. Father, thank you for this. What a blessing we have. Thank you for your blessing, Jesus. Oh God, oh God, thank you. Thank you. Another blessed one here. 
another blessed one here. Bless him, Lord. Let him do well by your mercies and by your grace. Oh, Jesus, thank you so much. Thank you. Use him, Lord, for a greater work, a greater work, a greater work, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Lift your hand, my sister. He's coming all over you. Yes, Jesus. Thank you, blessed thank Jesus. You, Jesus. Phil, yes. may you be a blessing to Jesus. May you love Jesus. May your heart always be with Jesus. May you sing for him. Dance for him. May you love him the way he loves you. Receive the gift of God. Thank you, blessed Jesus. Blessed Jesus. Hallowed be thy name. Oh God, thank you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus, for your blessings. Blessed, wonderful Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus, for your blessing. What a blessing we have in you. Bless, Lord. Bless. Hallelujah. Amen. You may go back to your seats. Father, thank you so much for your blessings. Let that grace be upon you now. Receive the gift of God. In Jesus' name, thank you. Lord. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. It's flowing. Oh, oh Jesus. Father, thank you for your blessing. Mercy. Thank you. Thank you. Receive the blessing of the Lord. Receive the blessing. Thank you, Jesus. Pastor, come. Give me some oil. Lord is lifting you to a new level. Lift your hands. Father, thank you. It's not by might. It's not by power. It's by your spirit. Is it not because he's anointed and because your grace is upon him that he shall do exploits in your name and that he shall save you and be blessed? Let these hands be anointed hands. Let these hands be anointed hands. And let him be an anointed vessel for your glory. Never the same again. Never the same again. Never the same again. Thank you, Holy Spirit. A brother here. Come to me. your hands bless him Lord and anoint him Jesus let him not lack this gift this anointing never the same again in the name of Jesus be gifted receive the gift of God be blessed and anointed let his power be upon you to serve God Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Everybody lift your hand. Thank you. Oh, yes, Lord. Thank you for your wonderful presence, Holy Spirit. Wellington. You have some more oil. It's finished. That's all you have. All right. Lift your hands. Father, thank you for these wonderful pastors. Lord. Huh. 
For you were despised, but the Lord has raised you up. You were rejected, but the Lord has chosen you. You were not wanted, but the Lord wants you. And chose you, and picked you, and blessed you. May his favor increase upon you. May you be blessed always. Because of the anointing on your life. May thousands come to listen to you as you speak his words. And may the power of God flow all over your life and through your life. May that which hinders you be taken away. And may that which opposes you be destroyed in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Lord, for your blessing. In Jesus' name, amen. Lift your hands and thank the Lord. The Lord is raising up many new pastors here. Yeah. Many workers. It's time for training. I hear the Spirit say, it's time to be trained as you work. It's time to stop spectating and analyzing. It's time to take a step. It's part of the training. Go forth now. Go forth now. You have received much. You have heard much. To whom much is given, much is required. Much is expected. May His grace and his mercy abundantly pour over your life. Father, thank you for every lifted hand at this time. We know your spirit is here to bless, to anoint. Hallowed be thy name. In Jesus' name. Amen. You may be seated. Hallelujah. Give me a basket, an offering basket. Listen, tomorrow during the day is our last day session. I'm going to be giving you some books as well as giving you an easy, good offer to buy some books but i want all of you to go home with books amen unfortunately the church planting we just have 80 copies so we that will not be part of whatever so if you want to get it please get it before it's out of circulation but the other books we have more of them so just get a copy i want us to give an offering amen can i have an amen how many feel that the lord is anointing you and blessing you it's it's only right for us to bless the lord with an offering. Amen. So take out whatever is in your heart and just come and put it in here. Whatever you, whatever you feel the Lord wants you to give, just come and put it right here. Just come and put it into the basket. Anything from your heart you want to bless the Lord, just, just come and put it into the basket. It's a blessing. You are giving it to the Lord. Whatever you feel. When He blesses you, it's only right and appropriate to say thank you, Lord. I'm blessed. I'm blessed. Father, we thank you for this offering. Bless your children greatly, Lord, as we have given. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay. We are going to close. Remember, tomorrow is our last 
daytime. You see, it's the day sessions that is the main thing. So tomorrow we'll be going through so many things. So please, do not come with the mind that you are going to go home. You understand? Just come with a permanent mind. You understand? Because when you are tired, it makes me tired. You understand? Why? When I see your faces tired, I, I become tired. I can't preach to tired faces. Amen. Are you there? Are you there? So you can close the service without saying anything. Amen. So I want you to come tomorrow with a mind. This is my last session. When I come at 9 o'clock or 10 o'clock in the morning, I'm here. Whatever God wants to do, half past nine. I'm here till whenever. And I'm ready for anything. And I want to be prayed for. I'm going to pray for you tomorrow. I'm going to anoint everybody with oil. I'm going to have time to pray for you. Amen, I believe. I hope. Hallelujah. And I tell you, we are never the same after these days. Amen. Because you have heard the secrets. You have heard the things that will make you different from many of the people who are not here. God is going to raise you up and change your ministry and your church and everything about you. How many believe that? Hallelujah. God bless you. We'll see you this evening.